is required for you to experience multiplication. What is that? The first one is renewed mind. The second one is right attitude. Number three, right vision. Right vision. For the young men, young women, what do you have to do? Look up. Hallelujah. If you don't know what, uh, what, what he's talking about, what Pastor Paul is talking about, review the sermon. Go to uh, the website and see it for yourself. Hallelujah. I'm going to start by bringing up to you Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43 verse 19. That's the first verse that we're going to look at because I believe it is very important for us to have the right perspective. It's very important for you and I to have the right perspective. It says in the Word of God, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Father God, we just ask that you would anoint each and every one of us. As you renew our mind, oh God, we yield ourselves to you. Let your word speak into our lives. Let your word speak into our hearts. Let your word be etched in our minds and soul. So that let your word transform us, oh God. That we line ourselves according to the word of God. As we trust you, you are in control. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So the Word of God says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now we all know that the number 8, the number 8 means what? Number 8 means new beginning. Tell your neighbor, new beginning. So the number 8 means new beginning. And this is the year of 2018. There's an 8. So for many of us, if not all of us, I don't know how how many of you will receive it. For all of us, it is a new beginning for you and me. Now, not only the number 8 means new beginning, the number 18 also has a meaning. What does the number 18 mean? If you remember the story uh, in the book of, let's see, I don't want to go by memory. The book of Luke chapter 13 verse 16, there was a story about a woman that has been in bondage for 18 years. Remember the story? Luke 13 verse 16. This woman uh, who is a daughter of Abraham has been bound. She has been in bondage for 18 years. But she came into the presence of God and Jesus set her free. The number 18 has significance. So this year, 2018, as you come into the presence of God, God will set you free. Not only will you experience a new beginning, but you will be set free. And there were Several other instances, and I'll just quote two of them. One of them is from the book of Judges. Judges 3, verse 14. It says that, So the children of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, for how long? Eighteen years. What year is today? 2018. So they served the the king of Eglon for 18 years. And verse 15, it says, But when the children of Israel cry out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for them, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. By him, the children of Israel sent tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Basically, when the children of Israel cry out to the Lord, God sent a deliverer and God set the people of Israel free. This year, you will experience breakthrough. This year, bondages will be broken. This year, you will live in the newness and new beginning that the Lord has in store for you and for me. Amen. And there are other instances in the Bible that I'm not going to go through because I'm, uh, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go there. Okay. So as we see this, God is really at work. This year is special. Not only is it a new beginning, but it is a year when you and I can experience breakthrough. Now, are you ready? How many of you are ready? So, if we're ready, let's turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And the Word of God is very simple from verse 26, which is something that Pastor Paul also quoted. So, I'm going to read 26, 27, 28. So I can give you the outline of my sermon. 
26 it says, Then God said, Let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, So God created men in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, verse 28, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is God's plan for each and every one of us. Even from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, God has already said it. God wants you to be fruitful and multiply. It's irrespective of how young or how old you are. This is the pattern that he has. Verse 28 is so clear. He said, God bless them. Do you know that you are blessed? We are all blessed by God. So don't say in your, in your mind, oh, I'm not blessed. You know, when we hear the testimony that James uh, and also uh, Ewan, or Ewan, Ewan said, shared to us, I know some of you cross in your mind, but I am not like James. Uh, my dad is not like Ewan. See, we start to confess negative stuff. So going back to verse 26, the pattern is very simple if you'll follow it. The first one is, then God said. In other words, what is your confession? The power of the spoken word. What do you confess when somebody said something positive about you? What crosses your mind? What thoughts do you have? What do you say to yourself? What is your confession? Do you think negative stuff or do you confess the word of God? Do you believe the word of God is for you? Or do you say, oh, I'm not like him. Him. I'm not like James. I don't speak like him. I'm not as tall as James. When we start comparing stuff, and not only do you compare, but you negate the word of God to work in your life. You come into disagreement with the Word of God. Let me give you the outline. The second part of my outline is very simple. Let us make men. Let us means there is power of agreement. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit come into agreement. They discuss what should we do? And when they say let us, that means they all three agree. There is power in agreement. There is power when you agree with the word of God. Regardless of your circumstance, but there is power in the word of God. Nothing is more powerful than the word of God. Whatever your circumstances, whatever situation you're facing, confess the word of God. You will see it manifest in your life. But not only do, do, do you have to confess the word of God and say the right thing, but the word of God says, we are created in his likeness. So don't say to yourself, but I am a woman. The Bible says God created men and women. That means your gender is irrelevant. God loves you the way you are. God created you perfect in his sight. You are created in the image of God. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't put yourself down just because you're a woman. Don't put yourself down because you're of a certain color. Don't put yourself down because you speak English improperly. Don't put yourself down because you're not educated like some of the people here. Look yourself to the Lord. You are created in the image of God. When you have that kind of a mindset, the sky is the limit. The destiny of God will be fulfilled in your life. And you will experience signs and wonders and miracles. The impossible will become possible. Because you know the word of God says, with God all things are possible. Will you let him manifest in you? Or will you stop because you face some problems? What are the challenges that you're facing? With God nothing is impossible. Now as we see the word of God, 
God not only does he want to give us, uh, created us in his image, he gave us dominion. Wow. Do you understand the meaning of dominion? When I understand, when we read this kind of things, it's like, I'm mind, my, my mind is like, whoa, God, you, you're just amazing. The word of God in the book of Deuteronomy says that he has given you and me the power to get wealth. And you look at yourself and said, but God, I couldn't afford the house. The first thing that crossed your mind is, I'm, I'm like this. I'm telling you, what James experienced is not because he is smarter. It's not because he's more handsome. It's not because he's whatever he is. It was the Lord. I'm telling you. you. You might be laughing, but the reality is, it is the Lord. We have individuals in our church in San Bernardino. Let me just give you a testimony of her life. Uh, I'll get her permission later on. <laughs> She's been in our church for one of the longest time. I mean, um, you know her. Some of you know her. And she owns a salon. You know, doing hair, you know, you know, salon, right? And that's what she does. And she bought this salon in not the best area of San Bernardino. Okay? So when you have a salon not in the best area of San Bernardino, as a matter of fact, this area is gang infested. For 25 years, she owned this store. And she even tried to sell it. She tried to sell her store. And guess what? Nobody wants to buy it. No one in their right mind want to buy a hair salon in an area that is gang infested, in an area that is, you know, just not good. So for 25 years, she's stuck with it. What do you do when you're stuck with something that's not good? What do we normally do? We violate the word of God. The first thing that we violate is, oh God, why? Instead of confessing the word of God, what comes out of our mouth more often than not is negative stuff. Tell your neighbor, I have to change. Tell your neighbor, I have to change. Make sure you do that to your neighbors. I have to change. Left side and right side, I have to change. I want to make sure I have to change. I have to change. And after that, you said, you have to change. You have to change. You have to change, okay? Make sure you do that, all right? Uh, how many of you are in agreement with me? Let me see in agreement with you. How many of you should change? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Not everyone, not everyone. More, more. Okay, Hallelujah. Then God said, because the power of the spoken word is so important. And this woman did not confess negative stuff. She equipped herself. She went through, believe it or not, they, we used to have, a, uh, some of our friends used to have prayer meeting at 5 a.m. She joined the 5 a.m. prayer meeting. And all God's people will say, Amen. How many of you will join 5 a.m. prayer meeting? Uh, 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 um, uh, um. James didn't sleep throughout the night because he wants to accompany JT. JT, would you like to stand? Let's acknowledge JT here. This is the troublemaker. Okay, so she didn't complain. She seek the Lord. She prayed. Amazing thing happened. What happened was God sent clients to her. Clients that have money. Clients that have money that are old. <laughs> clients that are money that are old that gave their inheritance to her. Now who could have done that? James, right? James could have done that, right? Or Ewan could have done that, right? No. No human being could have done that. No one could have done that. But when you 
focus on the word of God, when you confess the word of God, when you come into agreement with the word of God, that he is your provider, that he's given you the power to get wealth, you know what? It will manifest. When you don't look at yourself, oh, I'm a woman, I'm a small woman, my English is not good. You know, if you do, if you confess all of the negative stuff, you are negating the word of God. Your word, the word of God will not work in your life. But as you confess the word of God, miracles start to happen. One of them was a multimillionaire that made her to be on the will. So when this person died, husband and wife, she inherited not only the house, she inherited everything that they have collected all their life. Mind you, they have children, this old couple, but they choose to bless her instead. Now, is that James or is that Ewan? That is God. Now, how many of us, knowing the word of God, and yet we do not want to do what the word of God says, just because I'm a woman, just because you feel yourself to be not to be at the level of some people. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by His Spirit, says the Lord. Do you believe the Word of God or you just want to confess it when you're in trouble? No, we should live by the Word of God and it will manifest in our lives. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. All right, let me just go on. All right, let's see. Where am I? Oh, my iPad died on me. Hallelujah. Power of the spoken word. So death and life is in the tongue. And that is from the book of Proverbs 18, verse 21. What is your confession? If you were to say, Pastor Him, you don't know my wife. Pastor Him, you don't know my husband. Pastor Him, you don't know my children. Yeah, I don't know your children. I don't know your parents. I don't know your spouses. But I know the word of God. That with God, nothing is too difficult. And if you know the word of God, just do it. Very simple. You may not like it. Submit yourself to the word of God. So you need to know what you're confessing. You need to know that what you're saying will become your reality. Your words will make your world. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, as the Word of God says. What are you saying about your children? What are you saying about your spouse? What are you saying about your situation, about yourself, about your parents, about your destiny, about your circumstances, about your job, about your business, about your career, about your school, about your boss, about your home, about your failure? If you were to say, Pastor, him, you don't know, my parents are impossible. Some of you might say that. Some parents will say, Pastor, you don't know, my children are impossible. But you know what? They're in the good hands of God. Nothing is too difficult for God. Even if your boss is impossible, if God can bless James, God can bless you. If God can bless that woman that lives in San Bernardino, owning a depressed business, my God, God, He is able. I hope lights will turn on your heads. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. The adrenaline, the coffee, the donuts. <laughs> Do you know the fact that you're created in His image? That is already an amazing thing. I've already shared here a few months ago when the, in the book of Genesis chapter 11 when they want to build the Tower of Babel. They build it without God on their side. You can build something without God because you're created in His image. And with God, oh wow, the sky's the limit. Let's turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke 6, 45. 
A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the what? The heart, the mouth speaks. So you need to ask yourself, what are you saying? Do you say negative stuff? Do you say things contrary to the word of God? What is your confession? If your confession is negative, if you're saying things that are contrary to the word of God, you need to check. Maybe there is no a good treasure in you. Let me ask you this. Is treasure precious? But people have said that somebody's treasure is another person's trash. Or I should say somebody's trash is another person's treasure. I remembered, since we're talking about James, I remembered one time um, we had a TV that's broken. That's, uh, that was on the lobby of the church. It's broken. I mean, it's broken and it's old. That TV was from our church in Claremont. If I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Komar donated that TV. That, that goes back like about 10 years ago. So when we moved to Walnut, we brought that big, bulky, thick uh, LCD TV to our church and we installed it here. And after about 10 years, it, it breaks, right? It's broken. Guess, you know, to us, that broken t- TV is a treasure or trash? Trash. But James said, oh, it's our treasure. It's... it's <laughs> Because they, they, they do, they flip home, so they need to stage the house. So with, with a TV, you know, it doesn't have to be working as long as it looks good. <laughs> so James was saying, can I have that broken TV? And when we try to look for it, we already threw it away. <laughs> Sorry, James. I don't know if you, if you get that story or not. But So somebody's trash can be another person's treasure. So we need to ask. You need to ask yourself, what fills you? Do you fill yourself with treasure? You fill yourself with trash. Do you have the same paradigm as God? Well, pastor, there's someone here that I don't like when I see his face. (laughs) I start to smile. (laughs) You may have to check in in a mental hospital. But... When I see his face, I become angry. You need to set yourself free. Ask the Lord to set yourself free. Today is the day of your deliverance. The number 18 means what? Broken, uh, breaking the bondages. The woman that has issue, that was bent over for 18 years, She came into the presence of God. God set her free. The people of Israel, two instances in the book of Judges, they were set free when they cry out unto the Lord. Seek God. As a matter of fact, another story was Abraham. Abraham, his nephew Lot was uh, uh, captured by the enemies, by five kings, if I'm not mistaken. So, Abraham gathered his men from his household. How many men were there? 318. 18 is significant. This year is a significant year for you and for me. This year is a year of new beginning. If you have been down and out, if you've been discouraged, this year the Lord will renew you. This year, you will be set free. This year, you will experience breakthrough. If you will allow the word of God. I don't care. I shouldn't use the word I don't care. But the reality is, your mind, your thoughts have to line up with the word of God. Your thoughts does not have to line up with your situation. Your thoughts... Your, your thought pattern has to line up with the Word of God. As you line yourself with the Word of God, you're filling yourself with the right treasure. Yeah. 
When you fill yourself with the right treasure, when things happen, you will confess His word. When negative things happen, you will say, but my God is able. My God is greater than anything. My Jesus have defeated death. You know, it is not by might nor by power, but it is by His Spirit, says the Lord. Can you come into agreement with the Word of God? Will you come into agreement with the Word of God? Many times and not, we fail to do so because of what we see. We walk by sight instead of by faith. Allow yourself to walk by faith instead of by sight. Don't allow this double talk in your head. I'm saying things that is in the word and yet you confess something that is contrary to the word of God. Even as simple as saying, but pastor, you don't know me. Yeah, I don't know you. But, but, but pastor, I, I don't, I'm not like James. You know what? James didn't do a thing. Sorry to say, James. <laughs> he only accompanied JT. <laughs> and God did the rest. If that can happen to James, it can happen to any one of us. But the problem is, when you, when, <laughs> the problem is, when we have to accompany a person like JT, when you are in the tent with JT, we complain. What am I doing here? Why, why do I have to have sleepless night? Oh, my gifting is not here. You heard what James said. He didn't do a thing. <laughs> Sorry, James. I apologize again. Later on, I apologize again, okay? Since you, you came up with it, okay? That wasn't my idea. <laughs> Your words are seeds. And seeds are planted. So what you say is something that you will reap. So watch your word. So don't limit yourself. The power of the spoken word. Instead, speak life. Speak faith. Speak peace, healing, restoration, multiplication, promotion, prosperity, fruitfulness. Yes, even in old age. I'm 55. Go chap goa. 55. And you know what? I never feel better than now. I'm telling you, some of you feel like, oh, pastor, because you're not 60 yet. Look at Mr. Hadian here. If I may know, Hadian, if I may know your age. 73? Wow. Hadian, can you please stand? Mr. Hadian. This is a 73 years young man. I know he feels better than he was before. So young men, watch out. <laughs> young women, you know what? Just because we look older, that doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that we're weaker. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? But if I confess, oh, I'm old, oh, oh, I'm aching here, oh, here, oh, 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 do, oh, I don't want to say it. This is the year of new beginning for each and every one of us. Speak the word of God into your life. Miracles to happen. Healing is here. Declare and it shall be established. God has a good plan for you even in bad times. Not being able to sleep is no fun. And the dad might feel, oh, we missed that opportunity. God always has something better in store. Will you believe him? Will you trust him? God wants to promote you. God wants to multiply you. God wants you to live long and prosper. Do you believe this? Instead, what are you believing? If the treasure within you is trash, you will not believe this kind of things. Oh, I experienced this. You know what? God is able to change that. 25 years 
And yet the Lord bless her. Now she's driving a Tesla. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, um, uh, Tesla, okay, Tesla. Then I remember E1. <laughs> anyway, God is able. Do you believe that? God is able. It's not because of her might nor by her power. No. It is the Lord. It is God. God wants to bless you. We read the word. God wants to bless you and bless me. So what are we confessing? What are we arguing in our head? What are you saying in your head? When things are not in your favor, when you're being treated unfairly, when somebody bypassed you, when somebody stole your idea, that was mine. You know, my wife works in the pharmaceutical industry. And in the pharmaceutical world, it matters who came, who come up with the right medicine first. If you have, uh, this gentleman here used to work with my wife, so she knows, so he knows. If you can come up with a medicine that nobody else has come up with, your drug, your medicine will be a blockbuster. And my wife has shared one instance at a gathering and she heard stories about someone in the restroom was screaming and yelling and pulling her hair. Why? Another person came up with the invention already while she was still doing the research and development. Why? Somebody bypassed you. But you know what? If somebody took your ideas and you live right with God, you have the right attitude, you have a renewed mind, you have the right vision, you know what? Don't worry. God will fight your battles. God is on your side. Who can be against you? No one. Don't be a sore loser. Believe the word. Live by the word. Abide by the word. He will pull through in your life. Amen? Even when you're alone, you're in church, you'll say, Amen, Pastor, Amen, Amen. At home, Amen, Amen. <laughs> will you still say Amen when you're at home? When the preacher is preaching a sermon that is targeting you, no, when no one seems to comprehend you, when no one seems to care, when your best friend don't even, they don't even understand you, when your family disagree with you, when you're alone, you're still accountable for every word, every thought that crosses your mind because there's power in the spoken word. There's power also with agreement. The book of Proverbs, eh, the book of Psalms 133 says, the Lord commands blessing where there is unity. Where there is unity, the Lord will command what? Blessings. So when you come into agreement with the word of God, when you come into agreement with your spouse, when you come into agreement at home, oh my goodness, there's power. But when you come into disagreement, believe me, there's, there's, there's a word as chaos. In Hokkien, it's luan chi pachao. It's chaos. Why do I say this? I am, I've been there before. I want to go into business that my wife did not agree on. Okay? Does she agree or disagree? Disagree. So because I knew she disagreed, I did it quietly without her knowledge. Is that wisdom? No, no. How, how many of you feel it's wisdom? Any, any, uh, how many of you feel it? Raise your hand if it is wisdom. I'm the head of the household, right? Amen. Am, am I not the, the head of the household? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I pull rank on her? Can, should I pull rank on her just because I'm the man? You know, I'm the man, right? 
Can I, can I pull rank on it? No, you cannot. Just because. <laughs> you know, I went ahead with it. You know what happened? I lost money. I lost money. And my wife said, you know what she said? I told you. <laughs> but more than I told you is because why? There was no what? Agreement. I cannot go into those kind of things without my wife being in agreement with me. There is power in agreement. Don't underestimate it. So young men and young women, when you like someone, just because he's handsome, just because he's beautiful, who should you ask? Who do you think you should ask? Um, um, uh, you should ask Pastor Jonathan, amen? <laughs> Pastor Hilly, Pastor Dion, who else should you ask? You should ask your parents. Make sure they're in agreement with you. <laughs> because you don't know if that guy or that girl is actually a something else. But Pastor, he is in church. She's so beautiful. How long has she been in church? I don't know. <laughs> then you ask Pastor Jonathan. Pastor Jonathan, how long has he been in church? She just showed up last week. <laughs> how did you find her? Well, I pick her off the street. I'm not saying you shouldn't ask Pastor Jonathan. But the idea is come into agreement with someone. Let them walk with you. Pastor Jonathan had walked that road before. He had seen so many failures and successes. They can help you walk in the right direction. Pastor Paul said, right vision, raise your eyes. <laughs> anyway, all right, let me just go on. Power of agreement. Got the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Spirit. They are in agreement. Husband, come into agreement with your wife. Children, with your parents. Parents, with your children. Fathers, do not provoke your children, the Bible says. Children, obey your parents. But pass to him, you don't know my parents. I know. I don't know your parents, but I know what the Word of God says. So what should you do? Do the word. Parents, what? Oh, you forgot it. Let me repeat. Parents? Come on, come on. Follow after me. Parents? <laughs> Do not provoke your children, but children obey your parents. That's one commandment where the Lord has a promise with long life. That's an amazing thing. All right, that's fine. You know. Okay, let me close with this. All right, I'll close with this. Numbers 13, verse 1. Oh, Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, verse 2, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Verse 2 says that I am giving to the children of Israel the land of Canaan. God wants to give the people of Israel their promised land. The promised land is the land of Canaan. So God says, get 12 spies, all leaders. Out of the 12 spies, only two come into agreement with the word of God. The other 10 did not come into agreement with the word. They come into disagreement because they are giants in the land, because they are fortified walls. The cities are fortified. So when they went in, they said, oh, the giants in the land. We're going to be dead. They're going to eat us alive. 
But God said in His Word that I am giving the children of Israel the land of Canaan. God made the promise. The question is, has the promise been fulfilled? When you receive the prophetic word, which some of you will again next week, starting this Friday and then Sunday, so don't miss those two services and all God's people say amen. amen. Because we're going to have Pastor David Kitely and his wife Marilyn ministering here. When you receive the word, it's just like this. God is giving you and me our promised land. But it hasn't happened yet. So there's work to do. Yes, there are giants to be conquered. Yes, there are wall cities that has to be taken over. But many times we look at the giant and we ran. We look at the wall cities and we said, it's impossible. I'm telling you, the greater the breakthrough the more giants you have to fight. David has to fight his Goliath. As actually, the people of Israel had to, but nobody rose up to the occasion. Anyone that rose up to the occasion to fight Goliath would have conquered Goliath. But they are all afraid. The spies, 10 of them said it's impossible. There was no agreement within the 12 spies. And they did not agree with the word of God. What ended up happening was they went around the wilderness for 40 years. When in fact, they're already at the threshold. They're about to step into the promised land. They're about to go down. They're about to conquer the land. It was right there. And they went in there for 40 days. And the, that land was flowing with milk and honey. Abundance, prosperity, everything that the Lord promised for you and me are right before you. Will you obey? What is your Goliath? What is the promised land that God has in store for you and what is holding it back? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we want to thank you. I want to thank you, oh God, that you are here. I want to thank you that just like the people of Israel, oh God, as they were about to enter the promised land, Lord, they're right there. They're at the threshold of the promised land. And they sent in 12 guys. And those 12 guys saw the bountiful harvest. They saw that the land was flowing with milk and honey. And yet, they also saw the giants in the land. And they say, oh, we cannot do it. God, I pray, renew our mind today, oh God. We need our minds to be renewed, oh God. And having the right attitude, having the right perspective having the right vision that Lord you anoint each and every one of us because this year is the number eight that means it's a new beginning even though we have failed so many times in the past it's a new beginning for us and the number 18 is to be broke to breaking the bondages before us Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for each and every one of us renew us oh God give us the right perspective Lord so that we don't experience what Joshua and Caleb experienced. 40 years in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, we will experience what David experienced instead. David is son number eight. Jesse's son number eight. He is not the firstborn. Normally the firstborn is the one that has the looks the, the firstborn is the one that has the anointing. But God says, no, number eight, as a new beginning, this is the anointed year for you and for me. Lord, as we receive this, oh God, anoint us. 
Lord God, change our perspective because unbelief will never see beyond the difficulties. Unbelief will never let faith to make a move. Unbelief will cause you to stagnate. Unbelief will cause you to not get to your destiny. Unbelief will see the walled cities and giants in the land. But Lord, we want to have the faith to believe that you promise in your word and it shall be fulfilled because that is our confession and we want to come into agreement with the word of God. Regardless we're a man or a woman, you, oh God, are our creator and we've been created in your image. Father God, I pray as we come before you this, more, this afternoon, oh God, speak to us, anoint us. God, as your word says, that we will continue to increase and not decrease. And while, whatever we do, we shall prosper. We thank you for your word. Anoint us even as we leave this place, that the presence of the living God be with us always. And everybody who believes says, Amen. Amen.